Okay. All right. Let's talk about some singed. Um, <laughs> Let's make a let's make a rune page for Singed actually. So Singed is a bit of a weird champion because he's not very strong, but um, and I don't even like make YouTube videos anymore. But I figured I would make uh, just a quick little guide because uh, well maybe it'll be long. I don't know. Kind of depends on how in depth I'm feeling it. Uh, because I did something special on Singed this year that I haven't done on any of the champion before, and that is I got Master on EU West. <coughs> which is pretty big for me, uh, because I'm not very good at the game. So I'm going to show you how I did it, and all the setup that you kind of need for it before you go into game uh, in this video. So let's start off with the rune page. I actually don't have like a singed rune page and item set at the moment, even though I always use item sets, because I um, am playing Ramus at the moment, <laughs> so I kind of removed my... Uh, my items, but we'll we'll take a look at it together. So basically, the way I did it you, uh, on Singe, you have two choices for Keystone, right? You can go Predator with some sort of like healing setup like this, uh, or you can swap Ravenous for Ultimate Hunter, and then run the Predator this way. It's very strong, very viable. That's not the way I did it. That's like Minish Cap's version. He plays the Predator. I play the Conqueror. The Conqueror is a little different. Your ranged lanes are going to be pretty bad. Um, I always go Triumph, Tenacity, and Last Stand because they're just superior on Singed. And that was kind of my setup because my whole idea for how to play Singed was to basically take a champion that isn't supposed to have a viable laning phase and just like get through the lane and get to team fights. Uh, and I need Conquer for that because Conquer adds the extra bit of damage that you need to basically pretend like you have threat without really having that much threat. Although sometimes you do actually kill people and like solo people in the top lane, or if you proxy a lot or you invade a lot, you can kill the enemy jungler with it, <clears throat> like I did in like most of my games. Um, so that's my that's why I run that Keystone. Like I said, you don't have to, but that's what I did. And that got me to master, and it got me to like almost 100 LP. So that was pretty nice. For your secondaries, you can run really any of these trees, but I'm going to tell you which one is the strongest one. Now, it used to be these two. You used to run the red tree and then like this until Ravenous Hunter was uh, nerfed a bit. And then people started playing around with the blue tree, and they chose the movement speed stuff. This is great on Singed for sure. I think I think it's better with like teleport ghost setup, uh, maybe. And I never ran TP ghost. I mean, I ran it to try and figure out if I liked it, but I'm actually a flash ignite laner, so uh, I don't run these. And then you also have like the option to go into some weird inspiration stuff if you really want to. <clears throat> Personally, what I did is I went resolve and I went for just maximum tenacity between you know legend tenacity and unflinching and just maximum survivability and laning phase try not to die 1v1 maybe get a kill with your ignite 1v1 as well for some games i actually swapped bone plating for demolish because since i'm not running teleport uh you kind of need to like punish the enemy laner for teleporting out of your lane and killing your team, uh, and you can't do that without Demolish, because Singe doesn't do tower damage. So that was my solution to that, although in the end, I think the setup that I ended up climbing the highest with was actually Bone Plating, um, and then you just go double adaptive and whatever defenses you're for like what you're playing against. If you don't know what you're playing against because the enemy top side is full of flex picks, you can go health. So that's the rune setup that uh, I got to, got to master with. Okay, I, like I said, I don't actually have an item set, so I'm just gonna make one like the way that I would make it if I was playing him at the moment. So you can see exactly what I did and exactly what my thought process is. So what I do for item sets is I have like my starting items and consumables up here. 
I always start a corrupting potion. You don't have to do that. You can start uh, you can start refillable with what's it called the the stacking one, dark seal, and then you can buy a potential magi's later. Go like dark seal refillable, start into magi's. I tried doing that for a while, but I didn't like it, so I got off of it. I also usually will put my boots up here. <clears throat> So for viable boots on synergy of swiftness, very good against slows or just a general good boot on synergy because if you don't have the base movement speed to dodge skill shots and things that are coming towards you as singed, uh, you can get punished for that extremely hard because your champion is like not that good. <laughs> so you have to compensate for how bad your champion is with actual movement speed. That's why swiftness can be like pretty important. Uh, outside of that, I got a lot of Merc Treads and I bought a lot of Bladed Steel Caps. Always great boots, they just make you tanky, which is always nice. And for a while, where I was running the Proto Belts, I built Sorcerer Shoes every game. You don't have to do that, even though you're running Proto Belt for flat magic penetration. You can run the Proto Belt without the Sorcerer Shoes just fine and just run like Proto with tank boots or whatever. But um, Proto with Sorcerer Shoes is like really, really powerful and is a big way to kind of compensate for the fact that your champion doesn't actually do a lot of damage, especially in high elo when people will just actively step out of your poison. Um, the sort of <laughs> the fling damage and also the poison damage actually like really surprises people when you have Sorcerer Shoes. Like they will chase into you. Even high elo players, sometimes they will chase into you because they're used to the fact that Singe doesn't do anything. Like his poison trail doesn't punish people because it, it's not enough damage. So they just chase into you and kill you anyway. But if your spacing is like good enough and you have sorcerer shoes and you can like bait them, they and they will kill themselves. So it's a great boot to do. Uh, pretty much regardless of your setup, but it's extra good with uh, proto belt because stacking flat magic pen is just insane. And then uh, the actual build that I went with, let's see if I can remember it. Yes, I can. It was Proto Belt was my first item always. This, this is because Proto Belt, in my opinion, gives the maximum amount of skill expression that you can have on Singed. And if I'm not running Predator for my rune, I have to have a different way of gap closing outside of my flash. Just having one gap close on Singed is not enough, and no, your ultimate is not a gap close. Your ultimate pretends like it's a gap close, but you will get kited with it extremely easily. So your ultimate doesn't count, so you have to run either, you have to run double like mobility summoners, or you have to get it from your items and or your keystone. So you can go like Predator Proto Belt, or you can go uh, Predator Ghost, Predator Flash, or you can go Flash Proto Belt, which is what I did. Also, an extra detail there is that because I'm running Ignite, with Proto Belt and Conqueror, I can stack my Conqueror faster than any other Singed build. Singed doesn't stack Conqueror very quickly, which is why Singed has problems in the game, because he, he like doesn't have a real Keystone and he doesn't have a real Mythic item. And not having a real Keystone and not having a real Mythic item is really difficult to solve, but the way I try to solve it is basically by stacking Conqueror with Proto Belt and Ignite actives. Along with, of course, you know, auto attack, fling, Q, you know, the poison that's just like part of your combo. So uh, that's the reason I built Proto Belt. Without it, you get kited, and with it, you can really surprise people. I will say I have won entire games by just Proto Belting into five people and putting a W down on them and just walking away. Because if you have like a late game and you have Proto Belt Rylize, the active hex bolts from Proto Belt actually slow the target when they hit. So you can slow five people, and I've won many games like this, like 30, 35, 45 minutes into the game. I just press Proto Belt straight into five people, put my W on them, and then walk away. And then my, my team just walks in and kills their whole team because I slowed them with Proto Belt and Rylice and stopped them from moving. So it has huge playmaking potential and people just never expect it. They literally, they just see a singe and they think, wow, this guy is completely useless. And then like you flash proto about the enemy Lucian and the game is won. So uh, you can do some really interesting things with it. Or I mean, you can also just use it to dodge, you know, an ash arrow or just anything that would kill you really. So 
very useful item and that's what I climbed with for a while. After that, I actually, despite what Minish Cap says, I do get, you know, Dead Man's Plate if the game goes long enough. Usually my build would be something like Dead Man's into Zonyas and have this as like my final build. And I would play around with what I would do for like my final items because Demonic Embrace is just so solid. It, it has huge synergy with your poison and uh, it makes you tanky, so it's just a really nice item. But there's not a lot of like ability item, ability power items that you really want to do because if you start diving into like you swap Zonyas for Void Staff or, or for Death Cap, um, your champion has like a different avenue of playmaking that you can like, it has, basically what I'm saying is it has higher 1v9 potential. If you want to go, go 1v9 singed, it is the death cap, it is the void staffs of the world that you want to build for sure. I just personally found that the most reliable way for me to play singed without killing myself all the time <laughs> in the late game is, uh, is not with those items. So uh, do what you feel is best for you. Things to stay clear of. I never built Morel and Omicron because, well, I did build Morel and Omicron, but I stopped building it because they gave Grievous on your ulti. So you probably want to steer clear of that. Banshees is just a terrible item and should never be bought. They need to buff it or rework it. Honestly, there's no reason to get it on Singed. It's a bait, which is really weird because a spell shield on Singed plus the AP and haste should be like really good in theory, but it's just kind of wasted. If you buy it and you play it in practice, you can feel that it doesn't really do anything for you. So that's the build that I did, and I also swapped it for a while. I actually climbed very well with uh, Rylai's Riftmaker build for a long time, and I did a lot of amazing things with that build. The only problem with it is that um, it's difficult to run with like Flash Conqueror because again, you're forcing yourself into a situation where you can only gap close with Flash, or you can like almost only gap close with Flash, and in the late game, the enemy carries will like do so much damage to you that gap closing with W and movement speed is not enough. But if you have a setup where you can gap close on people, like maybe you're running TP Ghost, maybe you're running the Predator, Rylai's Riftmaker is the best setup in my opinion. It's better than Protobelt as well, and here's why. The leech and the tankiness that it gives you is huge, and not a lot of people do this, but I did it, and I did it a lot, and it was insanely broken. You can pair it with the occasional Spirit Visage. This on Singed, is insane power, and especially if you have an enchanter on your team of any kind, and or Ocean Soul, this is completely just like free win, and I see a lot of Singed players actually just like getting Ocean Souls, getting Sorakas and Yumis on their team, and they just don't build Spirit Visage, I don't know why. And I used to do this build all the time, actually, I, I ran it um, for a while, I climbed like I think I may have actually gotten like into uh, into master promos with it. Is like I ran the TP Ghost with this build, and TP Ghost with Rylai's Riftmaker is just so reliable. As long as you don't die in lane, it is such a reliable build. And if you have the full tenacity set up for your runes, which is the one that I was running, hold on, here it is. This is the one that I was running. If you have both tenacity and unflinching, then there's a world where you can just like ditch you know, Merc Treads, and maybe you don't want Pen Boots either, so you just, like, play for tankiness and movement speed every game, you know, maybe you just choose between Swiftness and Plated Steel Caps every game, and you just run people over in team fight. you just become this, like, team fighting monster that Singed hasn't been since, you know, since the old Leandris, basically, when you could build two items and just smash people in fights. So, really, really powerhouse build helped me learn sort of the basics of just how reliable you can be in a defensive laning phase and just take over the game with the team. Uh, so there was a lot for me to learn from this build. Um, it was an amazing way to sort of get into Singed and 
climb to like almost the highest level that I've ever played him as. Uh, but I will say the absolute highest level setup that I can find is still the proto belt one because that's the setup that allows you to surprise people the most in high elo. So that's the builds that I have found. Those are the ones that I climbed with on Singed. And um, if you want to know the playstyle, it's hard for me to, to like give you tips for gameplay because Singed is such a bad champion that gameplay wise, just like all I can really tell you is try not to die before you have your ulti. Okay, if you take trades level before level six, like if you're taking trades and you're not level six yet, you better know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing and you're taking those trades, you are absolutely trolling because there's no reason for you to limit test on this champion in the early game. He sucks so bad. Unless you're like really, really trying to hard climb and find like the, the super min-max way to, to abuse uh, the champion to its highest potential. But I, I don't think that's how like most people play the game. I think they just want to like limit test, but you want to limit test, but you want to do it so it's mostly to your advantage. So you don't go zero and five every single laning phase. Do you know what I mean? Because if you're going 0 and five every lane, then you will just never win anything and you won't have fun playing the game because you're losing everything. So Singed is a bit finicky. You have to be a bit careful with him. He gets very, very useless if you let yourself just get run over every lane because you play too forward. So sometimes you have to play conservatively. Sometimes you have to dodge matchups like Teemo or Kale or Vayne Top or whatever. Um, but you can like play your way out of them. But I think there are better YouTubers for if you want like advice for like Jace or, you know, crazy matchups, you should probably watch, you know, Minish Cap or someone else because I dodged those matchups. I banned Urgot and I dodged all of the ranged top laners and then I just played the melee ones and climbed with it. So that's what I, that's what I did. So take that for what you will.